Well, according to a 2015 PwC report, procurement fraud is now one of the big five economic crimes, with 33% of respondents in Australia experiencing this type of fraud in the past 24 months alone. The aftermath, overpayments, false invoicing and theft of inventory. For more on how to detect and, of course, deter procurement fraud, Michael Pilatus, Vice President of APAC at Base Basswear, I should say, joining us from our Sydney CBD studio. Michael, thanks very much for your time today. I'm sure there's a few people out there maybe scratching their heads in terms of what procure to pay fraud actually is. So break it down for us. Thanks, James. Uh, thanks for having me. So procure to pay fraud is essentially the misappropriation of company funds. Or if we look at it from a public sector perspective, it's a case of taxpayers' dollars probably going off to the wrong suppliers or at the rates that weren't supposed to be paid for in the first place. So how is it actually happening? How, how are the incidents being perpetrated? Well, look, there's a, there's a whole range of ways these sort of things happen. And what it really boils down to, James, is uh, a poor or inefficient, or in, in many cases that we see here in Australia, a manual accounts payable process where, mm. you know, bits of paper are being uh, moved around large organisations and there are lots of manual steps involved and, and people are, uh, have the opportunity for, uh, for things to change on those invoices as they go through the business. So what we find is by tightening up the AP process, by implementing you know, electronic workflows and other solutions in place that can you know, provide this as a, as a transparent process and, and more or less automate uh, the whole thing going forward, reduces those opportunities or, or lowers the vulnerabilities, if you like, of, uh, of companies to, to, to put something through um, straight into their finance system that is correct. Could, however, I suppose particularly for the likes of SMEs, could cost be a bit of a concern in terms of going down the road of full automation in terms of procurement if they've been relying on manually doing it in the past? Yeah, look, sure. So cost is a factor. But, you know, what we tend to do here at, at Basware is we offer different types of solution for, for different folks, if you like. So the SME, you know, players out there, we have like a cloud-based service, which kind of removes a lot of the... Uh, the costs associated with all that IT stuff. Um, of course, for big business, typically we find there's a lot more controls required. And, uh, and, and you know, things like business rules and, and other factors that take place. And, and they do obviously cost some. Uh, there's an investment there in time, effort, uh, people and process. And, and, you know, that's how we kind of balance it out for all sectors in the market. How, um, how much take up has there been in Australia in terms of uh, e-invoicing technology? Uh, okay, well, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, one of the things that we do here, in addition to providing, you know, accounts payable and procurement tools to, to streamline this process, is we operate one of the world's largest electronic invoicing networks. And the take-up of that hasn't been on par, if you like, in comparison to what happens uh, in the Nordics and in Europe. So Basra mm. is an international company, and we get to see what the other regions are doing out there in terms of e-invoicing. And, and e whilst e-invoicing is one thing, what that does is it means that when a, an invoice is leaving a supplier's AR or billing system, it comes out in a structured file format. And it traverses a network and then ends up in the buyer's AP system. And by doing so, that sort of cuts out a lot of that whole manual paper process and then allows the business rules in the systems to take over and validate and authenticate those payments coming through. Now, I mentioned we're sort of starting to ramp this up here in this country, and we're kind of, you know, hoping we, we do that over the next few years. And we know this works quite well because if we look at what, say, Latin America has been doing, and, I, and I'll talk about just Brazil for a moment. You know, Brazil embarked upon this whole, you know, e-invoicing uh, uh, network because the government forced, more or less, most of business to do so to curb the fraud and corruption that was taking place over there. <laughs> and, and that market has kind of responded really well in doing so. I think what we kind of need out here in this country, even though, and don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting our, our market is anything like Brazil's market in terms of fraud. We're still very much the lucky country out here. However, if we had government taking a bigger role in the proliferation of e-invoicing, I think it'd be a good thing for, for business in general. Indeed. Look, Michael, unfortunately, we do have to leave it there. We've run short of time, but fascinating. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me.